Okay, thanks everybody to attend this CDI2 talk. So I'm uh, Antoine Sabaudurand, I'm the CDI2 spec lead. And uh, you can reach me on the uh, Antoine underscore SDA Twitter handle. And my name is Jose, uh, you can uh, follow my Twitter handle too. Uh, one of us is the little dwarf with the power tool in his hands. I forgot my, my helm. Yeah. No, I'm not so wearing a beard. You can send us your, uh, your question during the, the talk uh, uh, using the hashtag CDI2. So if you have specific questions yes, that we can we monitor in your we try time. To, we try to, to answer uh, at the end of the talk or later if it's a bit more complicated. Uh, as you can hear, we have a beautiful accent. I don't. <laughs> so uh, next year, perhaps you, some of you should learn French. It's quite easier to understand <laughs> the French, French speaking, speaking English. English. Yeah. So what are we going to talk about? So we are going to talk about CDI, uh, starting with a flashback on the first version of CDI and the CDI 1.1 and 1.2. So, so the current version of CDI is CDI 1.2. And uh, uh, we'll give you a status on the CDI2 specification work. Uh, give you some hint on the, the feature we'd like to introduce in CDI2. Some of, some of these features are already uh, present in the, the early draft. Some should be present in, in, uh, in the coming draft or uh, final release. And uh, I will finish by giving you a small example of code because we have uh, this early draft running and uh, it will be possible to, to, to show you some of the new features. So let's go back in time. Uh, if we go on the CDI timeline, uh, we have a rather young specification. The first version was released with the Java E6, uh, six years ago, nearly six years ago. And uh, there was a new release with a Java E7, but we did a maintenance release uh, uh, one year ago. Uh, the maintenance release was to fix a few glitch we had with the CDI 1.1. So the, the official version delivered with your favorite uh, Java E server, uh, supported Java E server, will be the CDI 1.2. And we started the work on CDI 2 uh, last year, in September, at the end of September. And uh, we should release CDI 2 uh, during next year, during the first half of next year. So the plan here, uh, it's, it's not uh, totally decided yet, but the plan should be to release 2.0 early next year and start 2.1 uh, targeting the release of Java E8 when it will be released. Uh, talking about feature, uh, how many of you are using CDI today? Wow, wow. That's a good half of I love you. that. Thank you. <coughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, uh, I'll, go, I'll go fast. Uh, uh, across the, the, the coming slides. So you, we have a type safe dependency injection mechanism. There is this life cycle uh, management with the context that we, we love. Uh, all the AOP uh, feature with decorator and interceptor that was added at the very beginning of CDI with CDI 1.0. The event notification, which is one of the more popular, most popular feature in CDI. And of course, the SPI of CDI, which is not, uh, how to say, an, an, an easy feature to, to grab. And when you understood this SPI and, and, and learn about developing uh, extension, you, you see uh, the true power of CDI as a solution to integrate third party solution of third party spec. So in the CDI 1.1, we, we work uh, more with other specification in the Java E ecosystem uh, to, to have a better integration of CDI across uh, the whole platform. Uh, we added a lot of stuff to add introspection 
about your metadata and stuff like that, so you can grab uh, information about the, the metadata of the event or the current bin of, of things like that. Uh, we also had uh, an easier way to access CDI from non-CDI code or inject CDI bin in non-CDI code. So there are a lot of helpers to, to, to do such things. And uh, we also had a nice work with interceptor and the transactional um, transaction uh, specification, GTA, excuse me, uh, specification to have the transaction uh, usable for, uh, for CDI. So the add transactional uh, annotation, uh, which was added to the Java E7, uh, was added to uh, a GTA specification, but with the CDI perspective. Uh, the, C the maintenance release, uh, released last year, was mainly cl clarification. The, the main, uh, the more important feature we released with this uh, maintenance release was a fix that brought a conflict uh, between uh, CDI and other GSR 3.3.0 framework like Spring or Juice. Uh, we, we introduced uh, things that made people de deploying Spring application on the Java E7 server, uh, having seen them crash. So we have to, to fix that to, <laughs> to be a good citizen with other uh, framework around. And we started this work on CDI2. So it's the GSR365. Uh, it was the first uh, GSR for Java yet that was proposed. Uh, we work uh, with a <coughs> very open expert group. We have a, a weekly meeting uh, when, uh, when I'm not at DevOps or Java One or DevOps Morocco or I don't know what. Uh, we, so we meet, we, met, we meet every week on, on IRC. People from the expert group, people from the community, so you can come and, and give your, your insight. There is, of course, the mailing list as well. You don't have to be part of the expert group to, to join the mailing list. We have a, a regular release <coughs> of the uh, f future uh, reference implementation with the Weld3 uh, uh, project. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of people uh, giving us their feedback, their, their wish, and so on. And we released this first uh, early draft uh, in the middle of the summer, at the end of July. And if everything goes well, we should release uh, at the first, during the first half of 2016. So I won't go through all the list of the members, but I, I put this slide here to show you that uh, we have a lot of people uh, coming from the community in the expert group. And of course, there are people coming from uh, the, 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 the big implementers of Java E, but we have a very uh, strong uh, commitment from individuals on the, on the specification. So as I said, we are very open to community. So you can join the mailing list to follow the discussion or uh, participate to the discussion. You can go to our website to see uh, uh, what we are going to, to do next, or uh, uh, have an information. And <coughs> that's it for the, the story of CDI. Perhaps it's time to, take, to talk about the, the way we build the, the backlog of CDI too. Yes, absolutely. So basically, uh, there was a survey that was conducted uh, some time ago about gathering feedback for CDI 2.0. Who, who answered the survey in the room? Oh, this is you. Uh, Ask it's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, All right. we did a survey. Me, I, I give you something at the end. Yes. <laughs> we did a survey. It was not very popular. Not, very, not many people answered it. Uh, it's, it's quite important to answer this kind of survey. For instance, Java EE, all, all the priorities of Java EE has been set up according to the survey that has been made. And when you look at the figures, you realize that some li somehow 2,000 people just answered the survey, which is very small compared to all the people who are using Java E, especially to make if a living. I, if I may interrupt you, Jose, uh, you have to keep in mind that it's easier to come soon uh, during the spec when we are writing the spec instead of coming after the spec when it's no. too late. So I know it's easier to take the finished product and say, oh, uh, they should have done that, this and that, but it's too late. So try to, if you want to see things in CDI, try to, to, to 
come to us and ask. Uh, probably you will have uh, sometimes uh, no as an answer, but you, you will understand why and uh, you have asked it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So w what is the process to gather feedback? The survey was one part of it. Jira requests, which is another way for the community to, uh, to launch suggestions or comments on what is under the work. Uh, former expert group feedback. This is the third expert group that is yeah. that is made uh, about CDI. So yes, uh, the, the former members are still around, are still providing feedback on this, and other specifications feedback. There are specifications that are building stuff on top of CDI. You are going to give yeah. examples of that in the in the next slides. All right. So the survey could gather 260 participants. I think that should be about half of the people present in this room now. So maybe next time you should do the survey during mm. a, a DevOps talk, yeah, to, to have more participants. <laughs> and there was 20 features to rate. We're not going through all of these features, of course. The first and most requested feature is asynchronous support in CDI. And indeed, when you have a look at what happened two weeks ago in Java 1 and what is happening just now at DevOps Belgium, uh, you see that a synchronous call, a synchronous execution of methods, a synchronous processing of data, whatever, uh, is really in the mood currently. There are many good reasons for that, probably not so good reasons also, <laughs> as all buzzwords and everything that is in the mood. But hey, we need to provide asynchronous support for CDI for two things, for events, events handling, and we are going to talk about that quite precisely uh, before the end of this talk, and method invocation, which is something that is still in the ideas, yeah. but with not much things done currently. So if you have good ideas about uh, a synchronous method invocation call, please come to us, come to the mailing list, just make some noise, bring ideas, because it's really the right time to do that. What were the other top requested feature? having a way to, to do some things on the startup of the CDI engine, bootstrapping outside of Java EE, and namely in Java SE. JPA, for instance, has support for Java SE. You can, you can bootstrap a JPA uh, entity manager factory and entity managers in Java SE. So we'll be, we'll be able to do that in CDI 2.0 also. AOP for custom beans, we are going to talk about that. Security support, security support is a, is a major a concern in all the Java EE platform, so also in CDI. And, and, and the good news of security support, that was a feature requested, but there is a GSR for security yeah, now. Totally. And they are using CDI for integrate with Java yes. so it's a feature we won't have to, to deal with. Absolutely. Uh, observers ordering, this is true for synchronous observer support, we're going to see that. There's something that could be done for asynchronous observers, but it's much more complex to control event and of course, observers, and access to metadata through SPI. All right. Um, I think we're going to cover all these questions, in fact. Yeah, nearly yeah. all. Okay, so let's jump in it. So what about what about the CDI new feature? So, hand. so let's start with one of the ma major features that we wanted to, to add to CDI2. So uh, right now, um, uh, CDI is tied to Java E platform. And we wanted to add uh, Java IC support at the specification level. Uh, very often people ask the question, why would you do that? Because you have the, the implementation, Wild, Open Web Beans, and you have even a third party framework like Delta Snack that provide this way of booting CDI in Java IC. Uh, the problem is that we, we want to boost the adoption of CDI, and we have other specification around, like uh, Jose said, uh, GPA, JAXLS, and others, that support boot in Java IC. And if we don't have this support at the specific specification level, they, they cannot embrace the, the whole uh, CDI programming model, because when they will be in, the, in Java IC, we, we, they won't have the, G, the CDI container. So that's the main r uh, reason. Uh, we also have this plan, I will talk about it uh, just after, of having a CDI light specification, a lighter vers version of CDI. And uh, if we want to go that way, we first need to do some cleanup in the specification and have this uh, uh, Java IC support. And there are, of course, other reasons like testing and other stuff like that. 
and be able to, to be used in the desktop application and, and not uh, only a web application. Antoine, is picture time. Ah, yeah. <coughs> let's take, let's take Come on here. Come on. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> like this. Thank you. <laughs> okay, check, that's done. Uh, okay, so we, we already released a proposal for the uh, Java AC support uh, in the first early draft. So today you can play with this, um, uh, this early draft and try to boot CDI in Java AC. It will work. So we, right now, the proposal uh, reuse existing uh, class in the CDI spec. So that it will be the CDI provider and the <coughs> CDI um, uh, interface. And uh, we added. Uh, initialize method in the CDI provider. So there are two, two signatures for the initialize method, uh, one without uh, parameters and one with a map as parameters. Uh, so today, it's, let's say it's a basic way of uh, boot uh, CDI. The, the object that is returned is, uh, is a CDI object. It's now auto-closable, so if you forget to to, uh, to shut down your container, uh, it will be done in a clean way. Uh, and we are still discussing on enhancing this, uh, this uh, solution to <coughs> be able to add other parameters and non -parameters, no parameters in the map, but, but structured parameters to keep the type safe approach of CDI. So it seems quite simple when you saw, when you see uh, the, the code here, but uh, they, they, we have to do a lot in the specification to, to, to do that. Because uh, if you read the specification, how many of you read the CDI specification in the room? Wow. The CDI user that didn't read the specification should. They should read. <laughs> Uh, so, if you take the specification today, the 1.1 uh, one one or 1.2 one specification, uh, you'll see that there is a lot of uh, Java e references uh, uh, in all the specifications. So, you have mention of uh, AGB, uh, mention of servlet, etc. And uh, especially, especially, especially uh, AGB, session bin is uh, uh, everywhere. So, we had to cut the specification in two parts. So we created a CDI core part and a CDI for Java EE part. So all the Java EE specific uh, feature uh, were put in a specific part of the specification. Uh, and, uh, to my knowledge, it's the first specification doing that. Most specifications have mentioned like uh, when running in Java IC, you will have that, 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 you won't have that, that, that. But as we had a very strong intrication between CDI and AGB, it, wasn't, it was very hard to go that way because it, it, would, it would have made the, um, the spec very, very hard to read, harder than today. So we had to split the spec in two parts. And that allows us to add this third part, so CDI for Java IC. Today, in, in the CDI for Java IC part, we only have the boot part. We'll add probably stuff related to context, and context management in Java IC, and other stuff related to Java IC, like multiple container support, if we go that way, if we should decide to support multiple containers in Java IC. Uh, we have still work to do regarding this split and the um, the container under Java IC, there are questions about the built-in context of CDI. So today we have uh, uh, context like request scope, session scope, conversation scope. Uh, they don't mean a lot of things under uh, Java IC. So we had a lot of discussion and perhaps we, we will go uh, with the way of introducing a new scope. Uh, so there will be, of course, the application scope and uh, singleton and dependent. But, uh, will add a new scope, the method scope, uh, that will uh, be uh, activated uh, through an interceptor on the bin or uh, on bin method, and then activating the, the scope for the, the time of the, inv of the invocation. So that's something that we are uh, thinking about, working on. There is uh, a proof of concept uh, that, were, that was developed by uh, Tommy Tribe. So David Blevins uh, developed 
in his microscoped project, uh, a method scope. So we had this uh, idea with, without knowing he, he was doing that. So perhaps it's a good idea because we 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 were. Uh, 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 different person at different moment having the same idea. Uh, we also have work to do about bin discovery. Uh, we have the, today we have the annotated mode that can be very costly uh, if we go that way in, uh, in Java IC, uh, in Java IC 8 anyway. Uh, scanning all the, the jar on the class path can be very, very costly. Uh, and we even uh, disabled the impl implicit bin archive right now because it was too uh, too slow. Uh, so as I said before, we are working on the enhancement of the AC boot system. Uh, we should take more stuff from the AC feature from Weld. So we, we have a, a new way of booting container in the Weld implementation, and we will use the IDs uh, coming from the, the, the Weld project to, to add an approach more uh, based on the builder pattern, adding uh, uh, configuration through uh, methods uh, and allowing us, for instance, to disable uh, discovery mode, uh, add class or package uh, as been uh, in, the, in the launch time, and so on. It's, it's in early stage, so we, I, I cannot show you right now how it looks like. If you want to, to check that, you can go to the weld project and check the weld class, and uh, it will be something looking like that. Uh, another point we wanted to introduce uh, is modularity. Uh, this modularity uh, approach uh, is not for CDI2, but we want the, the spec to be able to be modular. Uh, the first idea behind that is that we want to avoid the bloated spec syndrome like over spec uh, noon and in the, in the past like a GB or over spec. Uh, and we want to have these sub specs a part of the spec to help CDI adoption. We have a lot of feedback of people saying, okay, your CDI stuff is nice, but there are too many features in your spec. It's the implementation is too heavy. I don't need events, I don't need context. I just want a simple dependency injection. For instance, we, we had a discussion with the, the guys at IBM that developed the, the Java batch specification, and they had to, to develop uh, an implementation of the at inject specification to have a dependency injection system because they, want, they didn't want to, to depend on the, the old CDI spec. So, what we uh, are proposing uh, is to provide a CDI light uh, subspec. So the idea would have a basic CDI producer, programmatic lookup, uh, a, a very basic scope, singleton and dependent, and uh, uh, yeah, on the slide there is basic SPI. It's not sure, and having as an extension the full CDI as we know it today. Uh, adding all the other features. So that would allow someone need, needing only the injection part to take the, this subspec and the, the implementation, the light implementation uh, uh, of this subspec and uh, uh, start small and grow uh, in the time. If they need, they can go to full CDI. Uh, we have some challenge linked to that. Uh, with the with this first aspect and the, the split we done in the in the specification, we we'll need a CDI light for AC, CDI full for AC, CDI light for AC, CDI full for EE. Uh, so we are thinking uh, so, uh, about solution for that. Uh, so probably this CDI light stuff won't be in CDI two. Uh, at the spec level, it will be a proposal in the annex of the specification because we want feedback of the community and feedback of people that requested this feature uh, to be sure that uh, we we did uh, the things right and perhaps in CDI 2.1 uh, add it to the implementation. Uh, to finish on the topic, 
We are in discussion with uh, uh, people, in, people uh, working on the Spring framework to work on the at inject specification and add a few stuff on the at inject specification to deliver a more consistent experience for people using dependency injection in the community, uh, would it be uh, Spring, uh, Juice, or CDI. And now it's time to talk about events and Stu, Jose. Absolutely. Thank you. <coughs> so, uh, events, as you said, as you saw on, on, the, on the survey, if, if not, even if the survey might not be uh, a good picture of what the, the general users of CDI uh, want uh, for CDI 2.0, uh, events is clearly some, one of the most popular features uh, of CDI itself. And the idea is to enhance this feature to make it more usable, uh, probably more consistent in some ways, pr bring precision to the specification, and bring the possibility to have a synchronous event. So this is what this, this part uh, is about. In fact, in uh, CDI 2.0, there are two things that are going to be uh, added to the existing specification. First, the possibility for observers to be asynchronous and the possibility to fire asynchronous events uh, inside CDI. And second, for synchronous events at least, uh, have the possibility to give priorities to observers so that the order in which the observers are called uh, will be uh, consistent and reproducible. All right, so what is the, uh, the, 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 the pattern of CDI1 uh, to fire an event? I have to get an event of some payload uh, injected in, in the class I want to, to, that is supposed to fire this event. And in my uh, critical business method, what, what does this BS mean? Did you add that? No, I don't okay. know. <laughs> I just call the event that fire, pass a, a new instance of the payload, and this payload will be sent to all the observers of, uh, of this event. Now, what is the observing pattern on the observing side? I just have a simple method with this, with this observes annotation that will take the payload and that will be called uh, with, with the past payload by the, the CDI uh, itself. It supports qualifier and, uh, and many other things. Now, the thing is that the, in, in CDI 1.2, up to 1.2, the synchronous or asynchronous aspect of the call of the calling of the observers is not specified, nor is the immutable status of the payload itself. So it could be possible, according to the spec, to call those observers in other threads than the firing thread. Now, the fact is, all the implementations, including the reference implementation, use a synchronous models. What does it mean? It means that once the fire method has been called, all the observers are called in a given order, which is not specified currently, so it might change from one implementation to another. So this order is not specified. And all those observers are called in the same thread as the firing thread. It works like that. The second thing is that the payload that is passed to the observers might be mutable. It's not specified if it should be mutable or not. And the fact is, people in the implementations are using this payload to carry some information from one observer to another. And the fire method returns once all the observers are being called, since everything is synchronous. Now, it has several uh, consequences. Uh, first, you, you cannot really go asynchronous in such a model because if you, if you muted the payload in one observer and another observer is called in another thread, you will have visibility issues, so race conditions and things like that. The second um, uh, consequence is that if, if one observer uh, raises an exception, it might kill the thread of the firing, uh, of the firing part. So it might kill your thread, the thread you're in. And there is a, th a third consequence out of two, so not, not three, <laughs> sorry, uh, is that since you are calling the same thread, all the operations that are thread bound, think of HTTP session or transactional operation, are indeed called in that context too. So observers can also access objects bound to the HTTP session or do some kind of side effect with the database in a transactional way even if it might not be such a great pattern to do, it has been done and it should also, of course, work in the upcoming versions of CDI. So the, the lesson from that, from all those observations, is going asynchronous blindly, just like that, use other threads to 
execute the observer, might raise problems. Or you say might raise problems, you, you need to understand, of course, that it will crash your application. So right now, what do we have? First, all the observers are called in the firing thread. They are not called in any particular order. This order is not specified, and if you change your implementation, this order might be different. Even if you, if you run the same application twice, this order might change also. And the third point is the payload may be mutated. So we need to take all this into consideration, uh, into account, and to continue and to build an asynchronous system on top of that. And this is part of the challenge. Let us talk a little about events and context. There are two contexts that are bound to, uh, to a thread in, uh, in uh, Java EE space. Those are the transactional context and HTTP uh, requests and session context. Those two contexts are absolutely widely used uh, and we, we cannot just ignore them. The fact is that the, the event system of CDI is are aware of those contexts. That is, it is said in the specification that when you fire an event, this event is fired within the context you are in. So it can be the context of the session, it can be the context of a transaction. So if we stay synchronous, everything is fine, it works like that, and no problem will be uh, observed. Of course, if we go asynchronous, that is basically if we execute a given observer in another thread, we will be in major trouble. All right, so let us have a look at what has been done so far. This asynchronous event stuff has to be backward compatible with the previous way of, as of synchronous event that we already have. So first, uh, First things to, to, to note, a currently synchronous event should remain synchronous. This is quite obvious. There is absolutely no way we can have a system working where something that is done in a synchronous way today should be done in an asynchronous way tomorrow. This will not work, this will crash, so it is not going to happen. If we are going synchronous from asynchronous, it should be a decision that you can take from the firing side, because in the firing side, you know that your payload is mutable or not, and if it's mutable, you know that if this payload is thread safe or not, because you are basically creating the payload on the firing side. And on the other hand, being synchronous should be possible in the observing side. Why? Because of context. If in your observer, you are doing some kind of contextual operation, if you need the context of the session, if you need the context of your transaction, then you need to, to say that, so you need to, to be able to tell from the observer side, I wish to remain synchronous. This is absolutely a must. So what pattern are we, are we currently adopting? It, it, it's already in the spec, in the, yeah, uh, in the draft of the draft. spec. So if you have feedback, it is still time to ask this kind of question, why didn't you something? Right? Because after that, it will be too late. <coughs> you could answer the survey, for instance. <laughs> okay, so from the firing side, instead of calling fire some payload, I will call fire async some payload. Thus, I'm telling, all right, this event should be fired in an asynchronous, but can be fired in an asynchronous context. That is, will be used in another thread. And from the observing side, I am going to be called uh, synchronously with the observes uh, stuff. This doesn't change, this pattern is still the same. And if I add the observes async annotation instead of the observe one, then this observer will be called uh, potentially in another thread, that is, in an asynchronous way. If it is called in an asynchronous way, it means that the fire async method will return immediately without waiting for the observer to be executed. This is completely different from the from the first uh, pattern. So in a nutshell, there are four cases that we may come across. The first one, uh, even dot fire, this is synchronous, and call me observes synchronous also. So this is the pattern from CDI 1.2 and previously. This pattern doesn't change. Now, to be completely asynchronous, you need to call fire async and have an observe async operation. All the other, the two other operations, fire and observe async, will not 
uh, work, and fire async and the synchronous observer will not work. So either you state that you want to remain synchronous on the firing side and on the observer side, and it will work. Either you want to go asynchronous from the firing side and from the observe side too. This is this is. Um, we, we might have done something more complicated and much more tedious to use, but we prefer to stay uh, simple and to provide simple patterns that are simple to understand. What about mutable payload? One short answer. Don't do it. It doesn't work quite well. Yeah, so no, it's, it's too small. <laughs> too small. Yeah. <laughs> we did a big, bigger glass yeah, next big, time, right? Big, big, bigger Never mind. Time. Okay, don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't don't use mutable payload. If you want to do a visitor, do a visitor. Use a visitor. Don't use an event bus to do some kind of visiting stuff. Or suffer the full penalty of race conditions. All right. It's better without the bottle. In fact. Sorry. It's better without the bottle. Yeah. It's better without yeah. the bottle? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, in fact, we have some more because we are not quite done with it. Remember what I said with the, the, the handling of exceptions? In the in this all synchronous world, if I if I if there is an exception that is fired in the thread that executes the observer, it might potentially break the thread that in fact is running my transaction or my uh, HTTP session. This this is quite uh, <laughs> it's not so nice because uh, as a, as an application developer, I'm just firing an event. Uh, other people are, are catching this event, observing it, and I, I'm, I'm not those people. The, those are observers, so I don't know about them. But they can still break my code. <laughs> so it's, it's, not, uh, it's not really great, in fact. So in, in an asynchronous world, of course, if they are breaking their thread, it's the asynchronous thread. So it's not my thread, at least. So my code will run properly, but their code might run uh, differently. So we wanted to, to provide an, um, a solution to get the exception that might be raised asynchronously in the other uh, observers, uh, get back this exception in the firing thread and do something with them. And the nice thing... <coughs> Sorry. Sorry? <laughs> Okay, this was, this was the exception, it was in another yeah, thread, an but I could yeah. get it still. This is a very good example, yeah, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It was intended, so, of course. <laughs> yes. So what if the exception are thrown by the observers? Uh, so this is, this is the second question. And, the, the, and another question is, what if the observer needs to be called in a special thread? And of course, one can think about the, the graphical user interface thread. If you want to update some kind of graphical component, you need to do that in the Swing Workers thread, for instance, or in a, a JavaFX uh, thread. How could you do that? In fact, we decided to pass a, a further uh, parameter to the fire async uh, method call, which is uh, uh, an executor an executor of type executor, right? An executor is basically a pool of thread, very easy. And the nice thing is that this executor interface has only one method. So you can implement this um, interface with a lambda expression. And remember, CDI2 is targeted for Java E8. That will be built Java on top is, of Java. Yeah, Java Sorry, C8. You know, CDI2 yeah. is scheduled for Java E8 that will be that will be built on top of Java C8. So we'll have lambdas in it. So we can implement that with lambda expression, for instance, like that, swing utility, column, column, invoke later. So it's a very clean and very uh, easy to read pattern. Now, this fire async method, we decided it will return what is called a completion stage. A completion stage is a new API from Java, from Java 8 that allows for a synchronous computation. And what is nice is that if there is an exception raised in one of the observer, we can gather all those exceptions and bring them back through this completion stage uh, object. This completion stage, we can call, for instance, the exceptionally method on it. Exceptionally method, it takes a, here a consumer that will take the exception and do something with it within the same thread. So 
we, we can still get information from what happened in the, in the observers. All the, the, the exceptions, in fact, from the, from the observer will be gathered into one CDI exception as a suppressed exception. So if there are more than one exception raised in the observer, we can still get them through this, uh, this mean. By the way, it's not the only mean to do that. We also have an handle exception, and we also have a when complete uh, method to do that uh, also. So this is very nice. Uh, observers can now return object. In fact, they also can uh, return uh, exception, even if the even if the um, if they are called in another thread, which is uh, which is really nice. The the, the CDI exception is called fire sync, and all the exceptions from this from that could be uh, raised in the observer will be gathered as suppressed exception uh, inside this exception, which is a mechanism introduced in uh, Java 7. The last method to do that is the when complete method that take a B consumer or uh, yes, a B consumer, the result and the exception and stuff. All right, Th this is completable future uh, API. Uh, event ordering uh, on the, this is for the synchronous uh, organization, the, the, the synchronous stuff. We can add the priority uh, annotation on the on the observes along with the observes uh, annotation, to just to to give a priority to observe to the observer, so that the CDI engine will order them uh, properly. Ordering in an asynchronous world is possible, but it's quite complex. And uh, it needs more probably feedback. So if you have feedback on that, please please give it. Bring bring your comment on the table. Uh, basically, uh, ordering the may mean many things. In fact, what does it mean to order things in an asynchronous world? It could mean that all the uh, observer could be called in a given order, but without waiting for the observer uh, to be to to have finished his is launched. Uh, it could mean also launch all the observer in another thread, but the same thread, so that it can be ordered in some kind of. Uh, same pattern as the synchronous world, it, it, it can mean many things really. So for, for the moment, nothing has been done and it's not really um, complete. We still need uh, feedback on that. All right, and that was for the event. AOP enhancement. Yeah, well, before showing you some code, I will finish with the, one of the features we want to, to introduce in CDI2 regarding uh, uh, interceptor and decorator. Uh, in CDI, we have this nice feature, uh, the producer, allowing you to, to take a class that you don't own and make it a bin with that produce annotation. Uh, the limitation we have on the producer is the fact that we cannot apply an interceptor uh, on, a, on a producer. And it's the same f uh, if you create a custom bin in uh, an extension, you won't have the capacity to add an interceptor to it. Uh, so th there was uh, the technical aspect uh, of adding that at the implementation level, but also the API aspect. Today, if you write this, you can think that the, the bin that you will produce will be transactional, but it's, it won't be the case. When you do that, you say the producing method is transactional. So it, the at transactional is applied to uh, the method, not to the uh, bin produced by the method. The solution uh, is probably to provide uh, an instance builder. So today we have in CDI uh, from CDI 1.1 and in CDI 1.2, of course, uh, we have this new uh, class called unmanaged. Uh, who used unmanaged or used unmanaged? Okay, so it's a very popular feature. Uh, you, you should look at unmanaged. It's a, a, a class that allows you to allows you to uh, to take a non-managed class with at inject annotation and inject a bin from the, the CDI container in, in this class. So it's it's not a bin at the end, but it's a class that has injection point. So today we, we, we create something that is not really a bin, but used, but is able to consume injection service from CDI. The idea would be to go a step further, and when creating the instance with the, the injection point satisfied, uh, add all the mechanism in the instance, so all the proxies in the instance, to have the interceptor and decorator activated on the, on the instance. So, this builder could be looking uh, like this. 
so we'll keep the produces uh, uh, syntax with the produces and uh, method. We use this uh, bin instance builder. And this bin instance builder uh, is uh, a way to create your uh, instance, instance builder for your uh, class. And as you need to give information about where you want your interceptor binding uh, applied, whether on the class, whether on this method, this or that method, we will use an annotated type to add information, uh, so to add annotation on uh, the meta model, on a given method, or so on. So here you have an example of an annotated type builder, which is uh, a feature that we, we plan to add as well, coming from Delta Spike. This annotated type is created from the, uh, the class my class. I take, uh, I retrieve the method perform in transaction, and I add to this method a new annotation, the annotation transaction literal. So it was like I had created a, a class, a new version of a class with the add transactional on the perform in transaction method. After adding this uh, uh, annotated builder, I'll build it. And I add it to uh, the, uh, the bin instance builder, and I build the bin instance builder. So it creates me an instance uh, coming from the class. I want to, to instantiate in my producer and uh, build it. So there are some uh, there are some glitch yet uh, regarding this approach because if you have a constructor in your class, uh, you won't be able to use it. So we have to to find a solution. But of course, the old way of using producer will uh, be still working. So if you cannot, uh, if in fact if you cannot delegate to the container the instantiation of your class, you you won't have probably uh, uh, an interceptor or decorator on your uh, on your bin. But if you have ID to, uh, to go further, uh, we are uh, open to suggestions. So I think it's time to go for a, a little demo. Great. I'll be uh, doing this and uh, I will wake up my uh, laptop first and switch. Does it work? Yeah. <coughs> so I have a, a little bunch of demo here. The first one is the uh, demonstration of the, uh, the Java IC uh, feature in, uh, in CDI2. So yeah, uh, before, uh, before I start, uh, you can today test uh, CDI2 feature. So there is this weld alpha, uh, today it's the weld free alpha 13. The well free alpha 14 should be out next week or the week after, I don't remember, but before the end of the, of the month. And with each release of, uh, of a new alpha version of Weld, the Weld team re also released a patch for uh, Wellfly. So you have the Weld uh, alone, and you have a patch for Wildfly, the last version of Wildfly. So you can apply this patch on the Wildfly you have just downloaded, and you will remove the old uh, CDI version, the old Weld, Weld, Weld version, and replace it, replace it with the, the, the new one, with the Alpha. So you can test it very, very easily. So here I have, uh, I don't have uh, a test ne needing uh, uh, Wildfly, it's a Java IC test. So, uh, as you can see, I'm, I have a main method. I'm using the, the pattern I show you before in, in the slide. So I get a provider, and from the provider calling the initialize method, I get, uh, I get the, the, the CDI object, which is, in fact, uh, an extension of the instance interface. So with this CDI object, I can request any bin in my container from this from uh, his class and his qualifier. So you see here, I'm using a container select to get my bin class. If I look at my bin class, what is it doing? Yeah, a nice uh, println. OK, so let's try to run this. It will be spectacular. Yeah, that's it. 
So I have launched a CDI container, uh, request a bin, and uh, launch a method of the bin. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let's, let's try something a bit more uh, interesting about event ordering. So here I have a test. Uh, let me show you. I have a test using Arclean. Uh, is there anybody in the room that does not Arclean? Does not know Arclean? Okay. Okay. So to make to make it short, Arclean is a way to create a test. Here it's with JUnit and uh, run this test with a deployment. So you have a static method annotated with add deployment, and in this in this method you uh, create an archive. So you, you say, okay, I create an archive, I add this class, this class, this class, and it will be the, the archive used for the deployment. So here, <coughs> I'm, I'm creating an archive with uh, a class called orderer observer bin and payload. And of course, the, the current class will be integrated as well. So if I go to the ordered observer bin, you see I have <coughs> a classical uh, bin with classical observers annotation, and I'd like to have uh, the first method called first, and so on from the, the event. So, right now, if I'm launching in this state, if I'm launching my test, there is a lot of chance that I come with something, yeah, in the in not the wrong order, so the second was called first, and so on. So now with CDI2, I can add the add priority annotation. So let's do something totally mad and put them in the order. I picked the wrong one. I, I, I see that uh, there are people following here. It's not the it's not the official priority. It's an issue that we have the, the, with the uh, with the commands annotation uh, specification. Just, just launching my test, I will. And now I should have yes, third second. Whoa! Yeah, I put yeah, I put the same uh, <laughs> put the same order. So when do you have the same order, you are in the. In the state, uh, you are today in a CDI, so uh, the, the order is not uh, specified. So, as you as you mentioned, the add priority I used come from uh, wild experimental because today the add priority annotation is in the GSR 250, so the commands annotation specification, and today this annotation cannot be targeted to parameters, so it can be pa targeted to type and to method, I'm not sure about method, but to type, yes, to put priority on uh, interceptor, for instance. So we need a maintenance release on the uh, commands annotation specification to be able to use, to use add priority. We hope that it could be possible to do that before the release of CDI2. Uh, that would be... Uh, uh, half of next year. Uh, if it's not the case, we uh, will have to postpone uh, this feature for CDI 2.1. That's the drawback of uh, the, the GCP speed, let's say. And a last example, uh, we talk about uh, asynchronous event. So here I have an example working with synchronous uh, Observer. So it's the same. I'm, I'm creating uh, an archive. I launch, I'm launching uh, an event, and I have this synchronous observer here. Uh, and I have one of the observers that uh, sleep five seconds. Okay. So if I launch my test like this. I will have to wait around five seconds to have the end of the treatment. Okay, so if you if you can see here, it took me five seconds and current and forty-one milliseconds to <laughs> to <laughs> to launch my test. Now I have the same test in asynchronous mode. So here it's rather the same test, 
but with a fire async, and with the, the same observer, but with the observes async annotation. And if I launch it, OK, so now I am back just after the test. And uh, the test finished, but I have the, the control of my code just after. If we, if we go back to the, do the test, you see here, I have, uh, no, it's not there. OK, I have just after fire, and just after fire is, was written very fast. Can okay, launch it again. Yeah, so just after fire is, launched, is written right now, but you have to wait to have the end of the, the thread with the, the asynchronous event. So it was to show you uh, uh, in a very uh, fast way, because we don't have a lot of time, and I'd like to answer a question, the, some of the new feature coming in uh, CDI2 and already testable in CDI2 early draft. So we have three minutes left. Do you have any questions? Wish, remarks, critics. Yeah? yeah. There is a mic, no? It's talking. I'm not sure. Yeah, just a small uh, remark, but in the example, you, uh, in the Archelian test, you added the web XML, uh, the Beans XML. Mm -hmm. Is that still necessary? Uh, uh, since CDI 1.1, uh, one one, uh, uh, Beans XML is not no more necessary, but you'll be in, uh, in the default bean discovery mode if you do that, which is the annotated mode. Uh, I'm talking about Java E here. Uh, so in annotated mode, the bin will be discovered uh, from the annotation they have on them. But you can still use bin XML to force the bin discovery mode. In this case, will the test still work uh, without bin XML? Uh, yeah, it, it could. Uh, I'm not sure of the test here because they don't have um, my, my bin don't have um, uh, annotation like context. But uh, you can set your bin to to be able to work without the bin XML. But you see, if you if you look at the way I built the archive uh, here. I added the bin XML here in the archive. But I could have avoided adding it and added a dependent on my bins, for instance. It would have worked. Yeah? So, thank you. In this um, Hello World example, it was just a main method without any servlet container or so. How would it work when you? at a request scope annotation or something? How, how is that maintained when you can use it outside a servlet container? Okay, so you, what you saw was not a, a version of CDI for a, a servlet container. It was a, a version for desktop application. So a Java EC desktop application. Uh, we are still thinking about providing uh, in the spec the, the uh, needed filters for a servlet specification to have CDI uh, activated at the spec level in a light container. Uh, it's not an out of purity, but uh, there are people discussing at this point. So if you, if you want to see it, you can go to the expert group and uh, push on, the <laughs> on this side. OK, I think, yeah. I have a question related to uh, asynchronous events. Uh, I recently found out that there is already some concept of asynchronicity in events when you use events with a transactional mode and you fire events at the end of the transaction. Yeah. So you can somehow emu emulate asynchronous events. Yeah. Uh, have you considered 
uh, using this uh, as a complement of uh, the new asynchronous model? No. No. No, because uh, it's too limited. It's too limited. Uh, yeah, but you have you have to you have to you need to have a, a transaction first, transaction active, and uh, bind your observer to. Uh, a certain fa phase of a transaction and wait for a transaction to achieve with success or fail. So there are, we are yeah, none of our I was not. I didn't want to uh, direct it in, in this way. My idea was uh, to reuse the, I, this idea, to have a bus to queue the events and ex execute them after the processing of a thread is finished or processing of request is finished. Why yeah. don't you submit that to the to the CDI spec mailing list? Yeah. Or do Jira. I'll please, consider please do it. it. Please do it. We need to stop, sorry. <laughs> but talk it talk about it offline. Yeah, okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you.